This is what it looks like if you rear end a Range Rover in an Audi RS6. It's why all the damage is up high like this, you know. And uh, this is what it looks like if a white cat and a black cat. And so on first glance, this car doesn't look too bad. I mean, at the, the very least, it's gonna need a new bonnet. It's gonna need a new grill that's all snapped and a bit gammy. It's gonna need some serious bumper attention, if not an entirely new bumper because of doodly 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 doodly. that hole there and there's uh, loads of cracks in the paint down here. This headlight here doesn't look too healthy. The bumpers come apart at the bottom there. And I imagine, you can kind of see it in there just, I imagine these radiators in there aren't in too good a condition as well as it looks like we're missing a couple of grills down the bottom there. But fear not, we will get into this in depth in a minute. If we ignore that one time I gave my other half my honest opinion on her outfit, buying this crash damaged RS6 is quite possibly the biggest risk I've ever taken. For starters, I bought this car completely sight unseen from eBay. It's an absolute buy it now special. And even though this was the cheapest Audi RS6 in the country, it's still the most money I've spent on a car for this channel. Not only that, but I've never rebuilt a crash damaged car before. I've only ever seen other people do it on YouTube. And then there's something else that has got me really quite worried. I just saw this happen. And what you just saw there in that clip was another RS6 cell for almost £7,000. And that car is what we call a Category B insurance write-off. That means that by law, that car can never be driven on the road again. It can only ever be sold or used for parts. And so why has that got me worried? Well, I paid less money for this car than that red one you just seen. And this car very much can go back on the road. In fact, this car isn't categorized as anything. If you're in America, you'd say this car has a clean title. So this all means that I've either managed to pick up absolute deal of the century, or quite frankly, more likely, I've been scammed to within an inch of my life. And this car is hiding things that are not clear on first glance. You want to hang around because later on in the video, I'll be revealing exactly how much I paid for this RS6. But the first thing we should definitely do is see if this car even starts. This car was delivered to me and we simply rolled it off of the trailer <laughs> and just parked it up right there. And so at the very least, we're gonna to wanna to see if she's got any oil. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh no. Oh, the gas strut's gone. Well, how am I gonna hold that up? Yes. <laughs> Definitely going to end well. Um, dipstick, dipstick. Oh yeah, she's got oil. So it did say in the eBay listing for this car that she is a runner uh, and the guy had 100% feedback. So uh, I imagine he's telling 100% the truth. Come on, Tammy. Oh yeah, she's called Tammy because Nino. Okay, come on. Park. Oh, what a surprise. Absolutely nothing. To be fair, I haven't actually checked if there is even <laughs> a battery in this car. <laughs> that is cool seeing that engine in there like that. I cannot believe, I, I find it mildly preposterous that Audi actually managed to shoehorn in a 4.2 litre twin turbo V8 engine into this estate car. I mean, that is absolutely cracking. How they got it in there, I do not know. I mean, if you've ever seen inside the engine bay of a regular Audi A6, I mean, actually, Let's, uh, let me show you. So this is Claudia, my daily driver. Regulars to the channel will recognize this car. But this is a 2.5 litre V6 diesel engine. And well, I mean, just take a look at this. This engine is 
right up against the front slam panel there. There is no space in this engine bay. I can, I can barely even get my hand down the back of that bulkhead. So think about adding two more cylinders to this engine. And it's not like you can put the cylinders on the back as the way that the permanent four wheel drive system on these cars work mean that the center line, you can see it there, the center line of the wheel needs to match up with the back of the engine, which is also the front of the gearbox. And so the drive shafts come down like that and they meet the wheel in the middle. So you can't go back anymore. So you have to go forwards. And it's basically a case of Audi simply made the front of the car longer. But it's just scuppered so many of my plans because I did plan on harvesting this car for lots of the body panel parts, including this bonnet. But now it turns out that this bonnet is actually shorter than that bonnet. I'm not entirely sure how much shorter though. Hey yeah. Hey yeah. Hey yeah. Hey yeah. Hey yeah. And so this dimension from the bulkhead to the slam panel is actually two inches longer than on a regular A6. And not only that, but they also managed to close up the gap between the front of the condenser and the bumper. All in all, they probably managed to find about another six inches on the front of this car. Very clever. And so that really has scuppered my plans to harvest parts off of this car because I really did want to keep the cost down because, oh boy, are parts for the RS6 expensive? Take for instance, one of these massive great brake discs on the front. 745 pounds for one brake disc. One brake disc. And you know what? <laughs> it wasn't until I sat down on the floor here to film this part of the video that I noticed the ride height isn't looking particularly great, is it? That's uh, quite scary because this car has got one of the very first early kind of dynamic ride systems on it. And uh, when they go, they go, and they're not cheap. Oh, good. Anyway, what were we even doing? Battery. So, let's have a look at the battery. And the battery isn't there. Interesting. <laughs> On a normal A6, the battery sits up there. And that is the coolant tank with no cap on it. So maybe I can harvest one of the parts for that after all. Aha! Oh, she's a big girl. That might explain why we were having no start. And she's got some charge by the looks of things. Come on, Tammy, let's go. I love how this dial goes around to 200 miles an hour in just a regular estate car. Right, what have we got? All of the lights, all of the lights. Now, I imagine there's no coolant in this thing. That screen is a little bit dodgy. The pixels are going. Oh, oh, she runs. Oh, she runs. Rough, but she runs. Whoa. Why is she so loud? That's really quite something. Oh, she sounds good though. That sounds good. <laughs> now I actually look at it, that doesn't look like a a standard exhaust system. So it looks like we've got an aftermarket exhaust system. Let's have a look, see if we can find out who it might. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you see what I can see? She's been straight piped. What an absolute riot this car is gonna be. <laughs> Quite clean under here, actually. Not bad, not bad at all. So let's have, let's have a quick look around this car and really take her in because these cars are absolutely awesome to look at if you ask me just look at that side profile with the with the uh with the flared wheel arches it's such a cool looking car so we've already seen this damage on the front now we're in here it does look like this front condenser has been punctured there this cooler is flat i imagine that's gone through there and punctured the main rad 
because this definitely doesn't have any coolant in it. Come down the side, I mean, the wheels are in fantastic condition, all four wheels. Like I said this car's from 2003, it's got, I think about 170,000 miles on it, so it is quite leggy. There's a little bit of a scratch there, but that looks like that might buff out. I've got a little bit of uh, scuff there, a tiny little bit of rust coming through there. Now, what this hasn't got is the classic Audi rusty arches. If you saw my video on that car, that car didn't even have any front wings. So if we come around here, that's lovely. So I am really concerned about this ride. <laughs> I'm gonna to have to get under there and have a look. It's really nice down here, tiny little blemish there. Uh, nothing on there, that's great. Massive, great scratch there. I'm hoping you can see that. Looks like it's almost been keyed. That's what that looks like. So I have to see what we can do with that. Windows have been tinted. Now on this side, you can see that, that tint does look like it's actually peeling a little bit. There's a little bit of a little bit of a scratch there. But apart from that, this car's in great condition. It's got none of the the rust on the roof like that car does. If we come in here, you can see there where the headlight has been pushed back and these two tabs have snapped. So whether that means that I need whether that means I need a new headlight or whether we can fix these with some kind of tab repair kit or maybe even just plastic weld them back on. I don't know if this works yet. That was probably going to be a viable thing. And there you can see that hole in the bumper. So I'm going to have to have a look at whether I either buy a replacement bumper or I, um, there might be a way you can just fix, fix that hole. Now, like I keep saying, parts for these things are expensive. And even the second hand parts are mighty expensive too, even on eBay. If you if you try and buy some of these things secondhand, they're just, there aren't any, there just aren't any parts, okay? And now I'm back in here as well, I can see that this slam panel has snapped there, it's taken an impact there at the top, so that's probably gonna need replacing as well. So the interior on this car is pretty nice actually. Um, you've got these really cool Recaros, the seat bolsters are all in good nick and obviously there's no airbags or anything that have come out or been deployed. Uh, and then the only thing which I can see obviously is this nav unit is poking out. Oh, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> okay, sure. Just before I pull the front end off of this car, I do just want to check out the hole in the radiator situation. Anything? Anything. No, oh, maybe we're okay. Surely not. Surely there's going to be a hole in this radiator. That's, uh, yeah, that's coming out really quite quickly. <laughs> metal or anything on that so that's quite good the only thing I'm worried about now is that that is filling up real quick ah! Ah! Oh! oh no no uh oh uh oh uh oh oh no oh ever so slightly, ever so slightly. Oh. You can never go wrong with a choose your flavor spanner, a vice grip and some fire. Come on. Oh. <clears throat> and so removing the car's wheels revealed the first surprise. It's been fitted with height adjustable coilovers at some point in its life, which means that the low ride height this car was sporting is actually really easily rectified. Adjusting it back to standard 
won't be an issue at all. And to be honest, it's comforting to know that the original DRS system that is the cause of so many suspension issues on these cars has already been deleted, so I won't have any expensive repairs to worry about there. But what about any other nasty surprises as I remove the front end? Well, these air collector, scoop director, thingamaroos hadn't taken any damage. The engine itself has been spared any impact. The intercoolers are in good condition, the belts on the engine on the front there look decent, and remarkably, the chassis hadn't taken any damage at all. That is an absolute result. Unfortunately, I had to cut this pipe off because the union was seized. It's one thing to repair a crash damage car and another to repair a 20 year old crash damage car. You know, at this point, corrosion has just set in and we're kind of dealing with other people's lack of maintenance and even some bodges along the road. I just hope that I can find replacement pipes. I found these cracks in the slam panel confirming that this whole panel is simply going to need replacing along with the radiator, the AC condenser and the power steering cooler. Luckily the oil cooler just about made it but you could definitely do with sourcing a replacement plastic surround. At this point I'm thinking I must be the luckiest guy around to pick up a car that's come off so lightly from a front end smash, especially seeing what I paid for it. But then the inevitable happened. So I was just having a quick coffee break and I was also just sat in the cab behind the wheel <laughs> picturing myself driving uh, an RS6, as you do. Uh, and I was just fiddling with some stuff in here. And the, uh, the chair, the electric, the electric chairs, all the luxuries, wouldn't go back any further. And upon further inspection, it turns out that the, uh, you know, the servicey book thing was jammed um, underneath the chair, stopping it from going back. So first question, why was this under the driver's seat? But secondly, let's have a look at what treasures this may contain. Spare key, that is good. Now here's the service book, a timing belt replacement in 2015. And that appears to be the last service actually. <laughs> oh, dyno printout. She's been tuned. She is putting out at the engine 485 brake horsepower. Carried out pre-purchase inspection. Replaced both front and rear brake discs and pads only 10,000 miles ago. No, 8,000 miles ago. Oh, that's amazing. Replaced timing belt assembly and the water pump 8,000 miles ago. Replaced the gearbox oil. Replaced right and left cam cover gasket kits. Oh, she's been looked after. Remove engine, replace left and right turbocharger oil seals, water pipe, and a major service. Four thousand pounds. <laughs> this is uh, AMD Technic. This is uh, actually a really, really well-known Audi tuning company. Oh no. Oh no. I knew this car was too good to be true. So I don't know if this was a pre-purchase inspection or this is an inspection after the crash. I'm gonna assume it was after the crash. So diagnostics, ABS pump, wiring, AC pressure switch, steering rack not attached to the chassis, track rods and tie rods loose, steering rack damaged, oh, coolant leak, eh. <laughs> intercooler pipes damaged and not fitted correctly, mass airflow sensor wiring and plugs need replacing, near side front brake caliper leaking. We saw that, didn't we? I saw that there was brake fluid coming out of that bleed nipple. Brake pedal tie wrapped to pedal box. What does that mean? This car is dangerous and must not be driven on public roads. Brake pedal tie wrapped to pedal box. What on earth does that mean? Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh no, why does the brake pedal go all the way to the floor? Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Don't be texting me now. Oh. Like I said, we rolled this off the trailer. Oh no, no. ABS pump. What is it leaking or is it the electronics gone? Okay, and then steering rack. What's wrong with the steering rack? It said it's damaged. Damaged what, how? But now straight away I'm thinking, can I actually harvest parts off of my A6? So I just had a quick check. No, I can't harvest the parts. We've got different, different part numbers for the ABS system, obviously. 
and a little bit of research has just shown me that the steering rack on the RS6 is different as well. All of the A6s and the S6, they're all the same, but on the RS6, it's different. They, it uses quicker ratios, so it's a different steering rack. There is one, one on eBay in Germany, so it's a left-hand drive steering rack, so it's no good for me, and that is 700 pounds. Ah. Oh no, this is not what I wanted to happen. Damn it. Just when I thought everything was going so well. Okay, let's talk money. So, no, oh, already regret that. <laughs> if my mum was here, she'd say, stop showing off in front of your friends. I paid £5,000 for this car, which I think is an absolute bargain. At least I'm hoping is an absolute bargain. The cheapest version of this car currently on the internet, in good working order, not crashed, ten thousand pounds so i've got five thousand pounds to play with to make this car well economically viable i suppose but <laughs> we'll see about that front slam panel and radiator now there's one on ebay for 450 pounds second hand now i can't find any of these for sale so this might be i might have to call audi but i mean educated guess that front grille is probably going to be 250 pounds Need one of the fog light grills at the bottom. They're about 150 pounds on eBay for one. We're obviously going to need a new bonnet. There is one on eBay for 150 pounds. However, that is going to need painting because it is not the correct color. We're going to need a new front wing as well. The amount of money it's probably going to cost to get that repaired is probably may as well just buy a new wing. There is a wing on eBay for 175 pounds. And I reckon just as an educated guest to paint a bonnet, to do a color change on a bonnet, to paint a wing, I bet you're looking at 750 pounds as a minimum. I'm gonna need a new power steering cooler for 160 pounds. Unobtainable oil cooler pipe, one million pounds. Probably a new headlight. And it's a Xenon headlight, and that's probably gonna be about 250 pounds as well. That is pretty much everything else. We're gonna need some contingency money for little broken brackets, for nuts and bolts, for new oil, and all stuff like that. So about 150 pounds. So some quick maths, and I absolutely 100% didn't type that incorrect because I've got fat fingers, but we're looking at a total price of 7485. That, number is significantly cheaper than the cheapest Audi RS6 on the internet. It's coming in at 10 grand. So fingers crossed, that is all that is wrong with this car. And I would have picked myself up a bike. In. Oh, I've just thought about something. Bumper <laughs> as well. How could I forget? There's one on eBay, secondhand, 700 pounds. 250, maybe more to get the bumper repainted after I try and plastic weld it or something. So. That throws this number off, but that is really going to be quite all right if I can pull this off. And so if you want to follow along with this journey, you're going to have to hit the subscribe button for the upcoming videos. Massive shout out to everyone on the last video who hit the thanks button below and actually donated a bit of money, and especially to Matt Sperber, who sent me $50 um, on PayPal. That is incredibly generous, Matt. Thank you ever so much. Or if you're someone that prefers something a bit more tangible, uh, for their cash then you see below um, I've got some merch for sale you can pick up some not economically viable sweat tops or hoodies um, I probably should have worn one shouldn't I to say this but 